Hi everybody, um, thank you for joining us on a Sunday afternoon. So today we are going to ask um, a proud egg donor of her experiences. So um, when was your egg donation journey? Was it recent or? Yeah, it was really recent. I'm uh, just finishing up my recovery now and uh, really, really excited. Okay, cool. So this is little Nanette, of course, just joining us on our lives. Okay, so we're gonna talk right away about the process because a lot of donors do contact Proud Fertility and just simply think it's so overwhelming. So how did you get started? Did you contact Proud Fertility or? Yeah, I, um, I met Proud Fertility through, um, through a common friend and from there um, it was just sort of really easy. I, I was asked if it's something I would be interested in and I definitely was interested and I'm super happy to have had the experience because I didn't really know where to go to get started. Mm -hmm. so. so did you make a profile? Yeah, I did make a profile. It was really easy. Um, you wrote a letter to the intended parents, asked, answered some questions yeah. on a questionnaire, and mm -hmm. from there it was pretty straightforward. If they had any questions about it, they so, sent me an email. So you had to self-disclose things as best as you can about your mm -hmm. family, about your own personal goals, your own personal health, genetic history, things like that. So then, um, Proud Fertility was, uh, had the honor of finding the right fit for you. Yeah. Um, and did you do, and you did a donation. Now, did it matter for you to do a known or anonymous egg donation? Um, no, I was open to either way. I was happy to help a parent whether um, they wanted me involved in the process or not. Um, I was just happy to be able to help somebody have a baby. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, there's also, did you do a legal agreement and did you have any psychosocial assessment screening? Yeah, or? it started out with some um, blood work and some psychosocial assessments and um, those are pretty straightforward. It was one meeting for the blood work and then one meeting for the psychosocial assessment. Some ultrasounds um, too, to make sure yes, you got some eggs. Exactly, they wanted to make sure that I had some follicles to start with and see where my baseline was and then be able to um, from there, see which hormones I needed and how much of each dosage I needed. Mm -hmm. So that would be the screening process. So um, after the screening, there's also a, well, there's also simultaneously a legal agreement. So yeah. what was that legal agreement was that? Was that um, really daunting or? It was long, but not really daunting. Um, it was pretty straightforward things that you would already kind of assume that were in there. Um, to make sure you have no parental responsibility over the Yeah, thing. making sure that, you know, I understand that I'm signing away my rights to my eggs to somebody else. Um, you know, everything that has to do with the donation and um, it was super easy and they said if I had any questions to reach out to them, so anything mm -hmm. that I didn't understand, they were really great about it. So the legal agreement me. is really important whether you do anonymous or known, but it just kind of helps you with um, maintaining and just managing expectations so you know what you're getting yourself into. Let's fast forward to the actual uh, retrieval period. So is that like a one day thing? Is it like a five day um, thing? How some many days, days were definitely better than others going um, into having the retrieval done. I was pretty bloated and didn't really move around a whole lot. But um, you have to go to the clinic, the fertility clinic, quite a few times, right? Yeah, every couple of days they just wanted to see how your eggs um, were maturing and whether or not you um, needed a change in your hormones um, or if you needed an additional dose of hormones added. Um, that process was pretty pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest fear now? I mean, I think people, needle thing, was that hard for you? I think the needle thing was probably the hardest. Um, what are they, what's the point of these needles? Can you tell us or? Yeah, so basically what they're doing is they're making sure that your um, follicles are maturing. You start with, um, slightly less follicles it helps you grow more follicles and then it helps more than one follicle mature because in a regular cycle only one would mature um, this kind of lets all of them mature so that you can get as many usable eggs as possible so for intended parents who may be watching this you don't ask an egg donor to be a donor and then get one egg <laughs> <laughs> yeah no get there's a lot of lots eggs. of eggs in there usually in a regular cycle you would only have one egg become fertile. So did you do all these uh, injections yourself? No, I had a really great friend that helped me. I did ha have to do a few myself, um, but having a support system to support you is definitely um, really helpful because um, poking yourself with a needle is mm -hmm. not an easy thing to do, but um, you get used to it mm -hmm. <laughs> after doing it for a few weeks. It's pretty You mentioned pretty about normal. bloating. So is this bloating the whole entire journey or just like a few days leading up um, to the retrieval day? I noticed a little bit of bloating in the beginning, but nothing too serious um, until probably like 
three or four days before the retrieval is when it started to get really noticeably so bloated. Noticeably, like, just a little bit bigger? You yeah, don't see bloated I, now. No, no, the bloating came down, um, like, two days after the retrieval. It was really, really quick, actually. I was quite surprised, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, but, yeah, the bloating, um, I was up, like, maybe a pant size for just the few days before the retrieval mm -hmm. and a day or two after just because I didn't want the pressure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the one part that was really noteworthy was that you told me that you cried at the retrieval. I did. Was that because you were just, like, so <laughs> I, upset? Were you in pain? No, or what it wasn't. Um, I mean, it started out in a little bit of pain, but I was um, nervous once you get into the recovery, like, into the actual procedure room, but... Is it, um, it is an op actual operation. Yeah, yeah, and but I was getting a little bit nervous, and uh, my best friend turned to me and she said, "But your intended parents are getting a baby," and we both just cried and cried, and that's the last thing I remember before <laughs> the procedure. And um, so you are sedated, mm -hmm. right? Like it's 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 a general anesthetic, so you're not completely out, but you're not really aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, last thing, a lot of people ask me, like, the trigger shot. That just sounds so scary. <laughs> it does What's sound like, scary. What does trigger shot mean? Because I think it's um, guns or something. Yeah, basically the trigger shot is just getting your body ready for the actual procedure. So, uh, leading up to it, you're taking hormones, which those hormones are helping your eggs mature. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is getting everything ready to be able to be extracted by the doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It was pretty easy. I had Super to do two shots, but I was already doing two mm -hmm. shots before that so so um would you like to care to share how many eggs you got yeah got going? so <laughs> out of the procedure um right before we went in i had 24 follicles um out of those 24 follicles 20 eggs they were able to get mm -hmm. um and then from there they were able to get five embryos so cool. and that's the information exciting. that you got to know because yeah. You have a known donor relationship, but mm -hmm. that's a, that's interesting that you know that. So then, um, walk us through the last part now. So you're done. You leave this clinic. Um, maybe you could tell us was this clinic uh, in the same city that you live in, or? Uh, nope. They were in a different city than I lived in, but um, I I you had someone there with yeah, you. Yeah, right? I had okay. I had my best friend there with me. She was there with me through the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. she was really great. I was able to have a lot of help because, um, yeah, it's good to have that emotional yeah. support as well as the physical support when you're mm -hmm. getting out of the actual procedure. Um, I really just slept the whole day mm -hmm. after the procedure, got up, ate some food, went back to sleep. So like, would you say, has it gone back to normal now? Or yeah, yeah. Like, I'm definitely back to normal. All how many days is it to, down. for you at least? Um, for me, I was feeling, um, physically back to normal in about... I would say like three, four days after mm -hmm. the procedure. That's common. Some people, yeah. some people say by the second day they're already good to go and normal. <laughs> and some people could have a little bit longer recovery. And mm -hmm. um, I think it depends how your body mm -hmm. feels. It's totally normal. To, and to the thing is how your experience is this time, if you choose to do it again, um, it might be, totally it might be different. different too <laughs> as well too. With different clinic procedures, different protocols, different relationships if you choose to do anonymous again, anonymous yeah. or known. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything you'd like to share with anyone that's watching from an egg donor point of view? Yeah, I would say if it's something that you've thought about, reach out and ask questions. It's been a phenomenal experience and um, I've been blessed to be able to be a part of this experience and it's something that if I was never approached with the opportunity, I never would have even known mm. that it's something that I wanted. So. If but don't you, you do you feel a little bit like you just gave away something or do you, you I actually feel gave? it's more as I gave a gift it's something mm -hmm. beautiful um you know I do you want to I a would mom love day, to or? have kids but I'm not in a position where I can really have kids right now it's not the best decision for me but um being able to give somebody the gift of having children is it's been a phenomenal experience mm -hmm. and I'm grateful to be a part of it yeah and lots of egg donors come uh, you're just of one example where you would like to have kids, but just not now. Mm -hmm. And there's some who would just say like, absolutely no way, but I don't want to waste my eggs. I want to help somebody. Of course. And uh, some people already have kids as well. And they want to bless that gift and pay it forward as well too. So it just gives a whole breadth of different uh, motivations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Thank it was you. great having you to share with the information. <laughs> Got the hiccups. <laughs>